Greetings everybody, Rob here from Saints Tower Games, and we're back with our second part of our Lost Omens Ancestry Guide video. This time we're going to dive straight into the Ancestries. If you remember, there are 14 Ancestries. In our first video, we did four of them. So this video, let's hop on in, and we're going to start off with one of the most grotesque looking ones, one of the most weird looking ones, the flesh warp. So looking at, at these pictures, you can see they have like their ribs sticking out. They have an extra limb over here. They have like a mouth jaw in their throat. Um, this other picture, they have numer numerous faces all over their body and like weird mutations and they look hideous. And they essentially are where either magic or science has warped their body. So, we'll go into the hit points. They have 10 hit points, so they are one of the media races. They have a lot more hit points than other races. And they have an ability boost of constitution and no penalty. So they are definitely have a lot of HP to them. They have low light vision. And they also have unusual anatomy, so they get a plus one bonus to their saves against diseases and poisons. So let's look into the heritages for the Flesh Warp. Now the Flesh Warp has a few. Created Flesh Warp, where you are created through some sort of occult or alchemical process. You don't need to eat and you can't starve. And you get a plus two bonus against diseases. Pretty good. The mutated one is where your body has been mutated and kind of twisted. So the DC to recover from your bleed damage is 10 as opposed to 15 and vice versa for um, if you have assistance, it's 5 instead of 10. So it makes it easier for you to recover from bleed effects. Shape Route Flesh Warp is where you have various weird like loose flesh, bony spurs, all sorts of weird mutations and it's... The experimentation has kind of traumatized you a little bit. Um, you gain resistance to mental damage equal to half your level. This one is probably the weakest one because mental damage isn't that popular of a damage source. I don't think many creatures use it. So unless it's specifically from one type of campaign, I would probably not use this one. Technological Flesh Warp. This is kind of where you have like cybernetic implants or technology has been implanted into you. When you roll a success on the saving throw against an emotion effect, you get a critical success instead. That's really good. I would say techn technological and mutated are the best in my opinion, followed by created and then shape route. Let's go into the ancestry feats and see what those are all about. So. Aberration Kinship, you can cast Mind Link, but you can only target Aberrations. Deep Vision, gives you Dark Vision, pretty self-explanatory. Living Weapon, you gain an a unarmed attack. Uh, it can either be a claws, it can be a jaws, it can be a tail. Some part of thing that kind of makes what you, your body has. Um, so it gives you an extra weapon. And it leads to mutate weapon, where the damage die can increase for that attack. Or you can even make have reach or have get a plus one bonus. So you have some sort of extra arm that kind of can do an, an attack. Stalling appearance. You are just so you know intense to look at it. You are trained in intimidation and you gain the intimidating glare skill as a bonus feat. Fin ridges. So fin ridges is where you have like ridges or flaps in your skin, almost like gills. You gain a swim speed of 15 feet. Again, pretty useful if you need a swim speed and it's not that high level. It's only a level five feet, but overall situational. Now this is the one that I got really like 
Gaping Flesh. Reaction once per day. A creature you are aware of damages you with a melee strike. Your wound yawns open, appalling your attacker. The attacker must succeed at a fortitude save against your class DC, or become second one, second two on a crit fail. It can't recover from the second condition while it's adjacent to you. So, reading this, if you think about how gross this is, you pretty much you get cut, and the wound kind of like opens up and like almost like creeps out the attacker so much that they can get sickened. And if they fail, they can't retch next to you. Automatic, I thought, okay, think of, for instance, if you were like a fighter and you force them to where they have to move away from you to get rid of the sickened condition, possibly provoking an attack. And then if they fail, because it's not guaranteed, you just run back up and into the next turn and they have to keep moving away from you if they want to get rid of it. As disgusting and gross this visual is, it's actually really, in my opinion, I think really good. It is once per day, which kind of like makes it a little bit weak, but you really, you really want to like tie when you want to gape that flesh open. But gape that flesh open, wow. <laughs> um, but like, it's a really cool reaction. Mutate weapon we've already seen. Powerful guts. Similar to kind of the second stuff, when you succeed as a four to save, you reduce it by one more, so two or three on a crit. Uncanny awareness, you gain motion sense as an imprecise sense out to 30 feet. Motion sense allows you to detect nearby motion through vibration, so like tremor sense and air movement, kind of like echo sense kind of. Captivating curiosity. You look so unique and strange that you actually, it's almost like casting a thrall, which is okay. Could be, could be good. Coating of slime. An acidic ooze coats your limbs. Your unarmed attacks deal an additional 1d4 persistent acid damage on a critical hit. When I read this, I think, could you imagine this on like a monk? So you're a monk. Whenever you quit, you do a persistent acid damage plus whatever other stuff you may have of like your monk stuff. Just extra acid damage on top of that. That I think is going to be really cool. Eerie compression. So this is where you kind of, your limbs, you kind of like collapse and kind of like tighten to yourself. Allowing you to fit as if you were a small creature. You can move at full speed while squeezing. I don't. It's cool, but again, unless you really are worried about squeeze rules, those aren't like a major rules in most cases, not the biggest practicality to it. Gripping limbs. You have nodules, hooks, claws that like to cling to surfaces. You gain climb speed. Again, pretty good. Remember we got the swim speed from, from the level five feet. This one gives you a climb speed. Slip the grasp. You are grabbed, immobilized, or restrained. One action. You have some features that allows you to quickly evade effects that restrain you. Attempt an escape check. If you succeed, you can either stride, step, or make an attack with a melee unarmed attack, hitting the creature that you just escaped from. Or you can escape again. So, essentially, it gives you a chance to escape, and it gives you a bit more options if you do escape. Augment senses. Until the start of the next turn, you gain the following benefits. You can't be flanked. When you seek, you scan a 60-foot cone. And when you seek for hidden objects, you start a 15-foot square. So, essentially, you can just... you. Can, you're kind of like heightened and you can see anything around you a little bit more. 
I don't know. But my opinion, this is the piece of resistance, if you will. Spew tentacles. You open your mouth to an immense size and spew forth an impossibly large field of tentacles. You pretty much cast black tentacles and they kind of spew out your mouth and take root and begin grappling anything as usual. However, the tentacles recognize you as part of them and they don't attempt to grapple you even if you are in the area. So your mouth opens up like the the, the, the mummy from the, the mummy movie and you just spew forth this massive Emma who knows the black tentacle spells it's a massive AoE of tentacles that just start grabbing everybody and you can run in there and you don't have to worry about being grabbed so that's pretty A it's just, a, it's just disgusting it's a pretty disgusting little looking thing and B it's also really cool at the same time so if I had to make a character I would probably, because of the, I, know, I think making a monk would be really cool. And then you have like deep vision and then you have gaping flesh followed by coating of slime and then spew tentacles. So then you have the gaping flesh to kind of make people sickened. You have coating of slime for that persistent acid damage on your punches. And then spew tentacles to grapple people, and then you can just run in since you can't be grabbed and just start going going to town on them. So overall, the flesh warp is a disgusting class. Um disgusting ancestry, but really cool at the same time. Moving on to the Ganzi. The Ganzi are a versatile heritage, not a full one. And they are people that kind of mingled with the the Maelstrom plane, kind of like chaos. So they have various like traits. They can have like protein type traits. They can have dramatic features. Like you can look at the pictures. Like this one, for instance, she looks pretty cool. She has this, but she has this massive like serpent tail on her. And you have this goblin that's like half normal, half like bluish and glowing. Yeah, you see here, Persian Ganzi is the most iconic with feathery hair, iridescent scales, and long serpentine tails. So, your blood is touched by primal chaos. You gain the Ganzi trait. You gain resistance to a single damage type equal to half your level. At the beginning of each day, determine randomly whether this applies to acid, elect electricity, or sonic damage. It's random, so every day you wake up, it's a different one. And you also gain a plus one bonus to saving throws against anything that would give you the controlled condition. Alright. Let's look into the feats. Creator Prodigy gives you Art Lore. Bit of a random one. The Ganzi Gaze. If you have low light, if you don't have low light, you gain low light. If you already have low light, you gain dark vision. We've seen these before on the versatile heritages in the past. Irrepressible. Uh, similar, we've seen this also on some of the other ancestries. When you roll a success on a save against an emotion or fear effect, you get a crit success instead. Smashing tail, you have that tail. The tail that has an attack, does 1d6 bludgeoning and has the sweep trait as well. So you can start, you know, having a tail is always useful. Vestigial wings. So you have wings, they can't fly yet, but you do gain the steady balance feet and the cat fall feet as bonus feet. So they can at least help you kind of keep yourself steady and keep yourself like maybe floating a little bit if you were to fall. Amorphous aspect. Again, similar to what we've seen with the Flesh Warp and some of the other ones. Your body is super flexible. Plus one bonus 
on checks to escape or squeeze. And if you crit fail on a squeeze, you get a failure instead. So, again, the squeezing stuff, I feel like it's very situational. And I don't know how much it comes up. Skillful tail. So, you have that tail or some sort of similar body part. And it it uh, it can do, it kind of, similar to what we saw with the fetchlings, when they have the shadow that can manipulate things. This is similar, where the tail can kind of manipulate some things. It also leads to loss on this tail, where you can use your tail to actually steal an object from somebody. Um, but you do need to make sure you have a hand free to take it, whatever, it, if it does steal something. If not, it just drops it to the ground because it can't hold on to anything for that long. So, you can use your tail to either steal or you can use your tail in a mischievous way to disarm or trip creatures with your tail, even if you don't have the a free hand to do it. Or, and if you combine this with smashing tail, your tail attack gets the disarm and trip traits as well. So, give you a few different things to do with your tail. Anarch Arcana. The magic in your blood is unpredictable. When you make your daily preparations, roll 1d12 twice. And basically, whatever spell you pick, or whatever spell you roll, you can cast that spell once per day. Or twice if you happen to roll the same number on both on both eyes. So, looking at this, there's some good spells here, like Blur, Hideous Laughter, Spider Climb, Mirror Image, Resist Energy, Scene Invisibility. There's some decent, like, utility spells you can get out from, from this feat. So, Humanoid Form. Overall, that's a pretty good one. And probably, so far, like, the best one, in my opinion. Glory and Valor. You call upon your ascendant blood with a mighty cry that last fills you with revitalizing energy for one minute or until you critically fail. At the first time each round you hit a creature of your level or higher, you regain hit points equal to half your level. So it gives you a healing, like a fast healing in a way, but you have to A, hit, and B, you can't crit miss. So, I wouldn't, in that case, I would be a bit more cautious. I would maybe do one, two hits. I wouldn't go for the minus 10 penalty. Because you might crit fail. And if you critically fail a strike, then you lose the ability. So, but if you're playing like a power attack type build, maybe like a fighter, could be worth it. Overall, the healing if level 9, let's just say level 10 to make it easier. 50 healing. Can't go wrong. We've seen that already. Auto resistance. So this is, remember, you get that resistance when you wake up every morning. But say you get hit by a different one. Now, you can't affect that one, but you can automatically change your resistance to that one. So, say you run into an ish situation where you have someone that's, you know, doing acid damage all the time or electricity damage all the time. You can switch your resistances. That one's probably going to be really useful compared to, let's say, Avise Ye Worthy. Avise Ye Worthy is really good. You can cast Breath of Life as a divine spell once per day. So, if someone in the party goes down and dies, you can quickly bring them back up just in case. Maybe the cleric or whoever the healer is can get to them in time. You can bring them back up. And we saw, we saw the last one, the Mischievous Tale. So, I would probably do... Hmm... I don't know. See, some of these are pretty like. Maybe Gansy Gaze to give me some more vision. And uh. 
skeletal tail, I guess. Anak Arcana and like maybe a Rise Worthy or Alter Resistance. I don't feel like the Ganzi, while they look cool and they have the resistances, which are kind of useful. Everything else is kind of really based around the tail, and I feel like the tail isn't that great. I mean, it's a nice flavor thing, but there's too much focus around the tail feet. They have like the, 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 ring, the wings, but the wings themselves don't really do much after like flying. Like they, like they can't fly, for instance. So, not the strongest in my opinion. I hate, I hate to say it. Let's go to the Ifrit. This is also a versatile heritage. And this one comes from like Ifrit, Salamanders, Magma Dragons, you know, the Plane of Fire, the City of Brass, those type of locations you may be descended from. And I see a, like a, this looks like a female monk, perhaps. Got kind of like the rocky magma skin. And you got this guy that's like very... It like, looks like a very dapper gentleman, like a very dapper, like almost almost like a bartender type individual, I must say. So, let's see what they do. You gain the E-free trait, makes sense. You gain resistance to fire, equal to half your level. And you treat environmental heat effects as if they're one step less severe. So, pretty much the fire resistance is what you're going to be using mainly of those two. Alright, so let's see what we got for our Ancestry Feats. Bright Soul. Your body is glowing. Your body is naturally glowing with the effects of a light cantrip. The light is involuntarily and, involuntary and constant, meaning you cannot turn the light off. You are just a beacon of light. Obviously, it's a minus two penalty on stealth checks because you are just glowing. And uh, you gain a plus one bonus on saves against anything that might inflict blind or dazzle because you are the light. So, unique way. Thin the soul. That char body of you makes it easier for you to recover from... Acid, bleed, or poison damage is 10 to the 15. So right away, you can see, just in two ancestry feats, Ifri already kind of has a little bit more versatility to them compared to, like, the Ganzi. Elemental Eyes. You gain dark vision. But you must have low, low vision already. Elemental Law. This gives you a specific law based on your plane. So in this case, the plane of fire. Now I want to say this, and we're going to go over some of these because a lot of these you can see are for all the different elemental heritages. So as we go through the videos, and probably in part three, you'll see a lot of these will speed up because it's the same thing basically. Ember's Eyes. This is the one we've seen before. If you don't have low, low light vision, you gain low light vision. If you do have low light vision, you gain dark vision. Very common stuff that we've seen already. Genie weapon familiarity. You are trained with Falchions, Vansia, Scimitars, and Tridents. You also gain access to all uncommon genie kin weapons. And the two different ones it leads to. Expertise where it matches the proficiency of your class. And Flourish, which gives you the critical specialization effect for these weapons. So if you want to use these unique weapons, then maybe your class itself isn't open to, this is a way to get those, those, those weapons. In a fire, you just call on fire and you can catch produce flame as a cantrip. Gives you a little extra oomph. Lava Soul. So this one you gain a Magma Spike on Armed Attack. Uh, it's an Agile Finesh on Armed Attack. 
and it does some fire damage. I would have liked this instead to have been a range attack, instead of being a magma spike where you punch, more like a magma spike where you might like throw it out at somebody. I think that would have been really cool. Sinister appearance. You possess horns or tail or red eyes that you can make yourself almost pretend to be a tiefling. You are trained in intimidation and you can have a bonus to your deception to impersonate or pretend to be a tiefling. So if you don't want to be an Ifri, you can kind of like trick people. Fire sight. You can see through the haze of flame and you automatically succeed at anybody who's hiding in smoke or fire. Concealment. Heat wave. Once per 10 minutes, it's a reaction. You get hit with something that would do fire damage to you. You gives you concealment until the beginning of your next turn. Could be useful. Say you get hit with like a fireball or something. Or some sort of like fire weapon. It hits you maybe even on the first attack and then you just concealment. And then, you know, depending on initiative order, it's a free concealment till the end of till, for that round. Skillful tail. Uh, we've, we've seen this again with like the Ganzi and stuff, similar things. Your tail can perform simple actions. Charred remains. This one, in my opinion, is really cool. Your next fire spell leaves embers in its wake. If your next action is to cast a spell with an area for, and a fire trait from one minute, your spell's area becomes difficult terrain as well as hazardous terrain, dealing one fire damage for each square. So imagine a fireball, right? And you cast a fireball, but you do charred remains with it. So the entire AOE field for the fireball is now difficult terrain and it's hazardous terrain. So say someone has to try and run out. They have to take like four or five points of damage just to leave. Say they're a really slow creature. Maybe it takes them two turns to get out. Now they're struggling to even get out. That one in my opinion is really cool. A 3D magic. You can cast an enlarge and illusionary object once per day. Scorching disarm. Now this one, it seems it's very familiar to the heat metal spell that we used to have in one e. I don't know if we still have it in two e, but basically it's a disarm attempt on the weapon. If it succeeds, the person must. Either drop the weapon or take fire damage while holding it. So we've seen Jim, we've, we've seen that one. Radiant burst. Your skin glows with intensity. Anybody within ten feet of you might be dazzled or blinded. A little flashbang type effect. Summon fire e elemental. It's a le level five. Um, Fire Elemental, and this is also one that we'll see in all the different Elementals heritages. They have a similar one. Blazing Aura. You ex this one's really cool. You explode in flame. Enemies in a 20-foot emanation take 7d6 fire damage. Allies in the area are quickened from one round. So, that one turn, you just AoE damage, your entire party gets quickened. That's an effect. You can see right now, you know, looking at, at some of these, the blazing all the summons, even the charred remains, heat wave, all these different ones. Cinder Soul, like, compared to what we have for the Ganzi, it's definitely a lot better. I think Ifrit definitely is much better. Than the Ganzi class, the Ganzi ancestry. So, overall, Ifrit looks pretty good.
and the Kitsuin. Want to wrap this video up with the Kitsuin, the classic ancestry, the one may call it the Weeb ancestry, the Fox people, the Naruto people, whatever you want to call them. And I will say the pictures look really cool for them. Like, look at this Kitsuin with the orb and all the tails. That's pretty badass. It even has like a a gi, almost like a Shinigami type bleach uniform. Uh, this one's got like this fox is like, those look so good. Give me a biscuit. Give me a treat. You know, I don't know what's going on with that, but that that, that fox looks hungry. So anybody who does not know Kitsuin are you are tricksters? They are fox spirits from Japan. Um, so obviously in, in Golarian, they would come from the Tianzi area. So, Tianzi. 8 hit points, medium, 25. Charisma boost, makes sense. They have low light and they can change their shape. So they can change their shape depending on what their heritage is. So you can either be a hybrid to either a humanoid normal form Maybe even a fox. We'll see which one, depending on what you pick. So. Heritages. Celestial Envoy Kitsurian. You gain the Invoke Celestial Privilege. And of course, your other form is a human. Some sort of human form without a tail. Invoke Celestial Privilege, uh, when you make a saving throw against a Divine Effect, you get a plus one check against it. So, Divine Protection, basically. Dark Field Kitsuin. Um, your Unsettling Presence to Demoralize people. When you do Demoralizing, loses the author trait and gains the visual trait, so you, they can just have to see you, they don't have to hear you. And you also gain the invigorating fear reaction. Your ultimate form is a fox, which matches the stats for the level one pest form. You are invigorating by which the shock of a prank of the throne of terror. So whenever someone gets frightened within your 60 feet of you, you gain temporary hit points equal to the creature's level or three, whichever is higher. So free hit points. This is good if you either are the one doing the demoralize, or if you have a fighter that might be doing intimidating stuff. Overall, pretty good. Definitely, in my, in my opinion, better than Celestia Envoy. Earthly Wilds Kitsuin. You have a Jaws attack, and your alternate form is a fox. The Empty Sky Kitsuin. You have more connected to the magic. You gain the Kitsurin spell familiarity ancestry feat. And you have more of a human alternate form. And the Frozen Wind Kitsurin. Gain cold resistance, half your level. And you treat environmental cold effects more or less. So, honestly, everything except the Celestial one I think is really good. So you got quite a few different ways to play with it. Kitsuin feats. Okay. Foxfire. Choose either like uh, choose either electricity or fire when you gain this feat. You gain a ranged unarmed attack with a maximum range of 20 feet. This attack deals 1d4 damage of the chosen type. And you can improve this with hand wraps of the Mighty Blows. So remember when we talked about the Magma Spike from the Ifrit? This is kind of that ranged one. It's a little bit weaker, but gives you a range attack in case you need to. And if you are Frozen Wind Kitsuin, you can choose to do cold damage instead. Well, not you choose. It does cold damage instead. Kitsuin Law obviously gives you law on Kitsuin. Kitsuin Spell Familiarity, you can choose either Daze, Forbidding Ward, or Ghost Sound as a cantrip that you can pick up. So, give you one of those tricks to spells. Protectable Claws, 
arm if it gives you a, a claws attack. Save changes intuition. Whenever you come within 10 feet of someone that's impersonating someone or transform, there's a chance that you can automatically know they aren't real. So doppelgangers, um, dragons potentially, uh, rakshasas, anybody who has that shape change ability, there's a chance that you might be able to automatically know that they aren't real. That's pretty cool. Star Orb. You, your magic is this stone. It's a familiar, but it's a, an orb. It has no speed, so you, obviously if you want to have speed, you must pick the speed familiar ability before it can even move. And it's just a stone. The reason why this orb is cool is because it leads to Killing Stone at level 13. Which allows you to cast a 5th level Cloud Kill spell once per day. So, that little orb that you've just been carrying around for 12 levels, now it's going to kill people. Hybrid form. So when you change your shape, you can retain elements of your Kitsuin form, either allowing you to speak when you're a fox, allowing you to use your Kitsuin attacks when you're a human, and so forth. Kitsuin Spell Mysteries. You can either choose Bane, Illusionary Object, or Sanctuary. And this leads to Kitsuin Spell Expertise, allowing you to choose either Confusion, Death Ward, or Illusionary Scene. So again, a lot more of those illusion type magic that we see with the Kitsuin. Myriad Forms allows you to find a new form based on a different heritage than whatever one you ended up choosing. So maybe you liked one of the heritage's effects, but you want, didn't like what the chain shape led to. Shifting faces. When you change shape into your tailless form, you gain the effects of a third level illusionary disguise from one hour. So temporarily, can, oops. Temporarily can kind of like change who you look at, who you who, who you look to be. Box trick. You can for a free action once per hour create a diversion, conceal or hide. But obviously, once everybody who's seen it, they kind of wise up to it, and they're immune for twenty four hours. So it gives you that one little quick trick to do. If you need to do. Killing guard we've already seen. Kitsuin Spot Express, we've already seen. Rampaging Form. So this is if you have the chain shape into a fox. You instead gain the effects of both the canine form of 5th level animal and 7th level fiery body for 1 minute or until you shift back. Whichever comes first and you cast produce flame from the fiery body effect even though you're in a battle form. And obviously this all changes to Cold if you're a frozen wind Kitsurine. So you turn into a mini Naruto basically. And you kind of have all the, the like the flame embers, your fox, and you just go crazy. It's pretty cool. The Kitsurine feats are actually like I could see myself playing some sort of a Kitsurine spellcaster perhaps. And having like a star orb, maybe. Maybe shifting faces, fox trip, killing stone, rampaging form. So I have the orb to do that massive cloud kill if I want to. I can disguise myself and trick people. And then if I need to, if I need to, I can just go crazy with rampaging form. If I want to like conserve my spells or if I'm low on spells. So overall, the Kitsurine is actually pretty cool. I, I feel like. I don't know if the Kitsuin always had um, as many cool, unique things in the version M1E. I know they were in first edition, but I think they definitely have more practicality, like the Star Orb, 
the rampage and form those are i think new things that we didn't see before so overall i think it's a really cool design for the kitsurian and i expect to see a few more of them popping up now i mean they already pop they already pop up anyway because they're a very popular race but with all the stuff they have to offer now definitely a really good class good ancestry in my opinion so with that i'm gonna wrap up this part of the video thank you guys for watching be sure to like and subscribe for more and stay tuned for part three of the lost omens ancestry guide video where we will hopefully wrap up the rest of the ancestries and with that give you guys a full look at all the different ones out there thank you guys